Hey guys, this is Tom with DraftMagic.com, and I'm here this morning to compete in a online PTQ. Um, it's been a while since I've had a chance to compete in a big event. I'm really excited, and I'm looking at the Pure Steel Collar version of the deck um, that I've just made some tweaks to. I actually had, uh, you know, a very interesting comment on my last video, uh, which really kind of sparked me to make some changes here, and. You know, so the, kind of the direction that I've gone with the deck is a little bit um, more of a mid-range, kind of that uses the the benefit of Restoration Angel instead of using um, Cloud Shift just for a little bit more value, and then also just kind of instead of a little bit of a mishmash in terms of getting a little bit more value in terms with your Blade Hold, Silver Blade Paladin, Blade Splicer. So it, it's kind of a little bit more of a, a mixed bag, but at the same time. I think that you know th this deck is going to actually work together pretty well. Had a chance to do a couple matches um, with this version of the deck the other night, and really liking how it's playing out. Um, the Restoration Angel has just been so so good in this deck, especially with the the Blade Splicer um, being able to reset Silver Blade Paladin for a blowout. Um, it's just been very powerful. So really looking forward to see how we could do today with Pierce Doe Collar and the the sideboard didn't change too much um, I'm still very much a big fan of Nevermore especially against the Solar Flare deck to be able to you know put out Nevermore before they drop Sun Titan especially if they have um, Cavern of Souls to kinda get around the whole uncounterable um, aspect just to be able to kind of shut down that line of play, I think that uh, will be a pretty helpful and useful tool for us today. So, anyways, we're going to get started here in a little bit, but we'll see you guys for round one. Okay, here we are for round one. We're going to be on the play, and let's take a look. Let's see what our hand looks like. So, this is definitely a great opening hand. Happy to keep. Really like seeing the Cavern of Souls here, especially if we're up against some sort of um, deck that's using counter spells. It's been a little while since I've done um, more regular kind of matches, um, you know, with this deck and also online. Um, but I had a chance to play, you know, a couple different decks. Got a chance to play a Naya deck tonight, and then more recently a Solar Flare deck. So. Hopefully we'll see one of our regular tried and true enemies. Maybe we'll run into the most current version of the Delver deck. Should find out here in just a moment. Okay, so we're going to lead out with the planes here just to uh, not give away too much information right away. We're going to hold back on the collar just so we can get the extra value off of uh, Pure Steel Paladin. Okay, looks like we could be up against Delver. Um, possibly Solar Blair. Should find out here pretty quickly. But um, kind of with the, the new version of Delver that's uh, using the Restoration Angel now, um, definitely going to be an interesting, an interesting change here. So it is Delver. Um, and I think now that we have Restoration Angels in this deck as well, I feel much more comfortable about, you know, really kind of the, the matchup a little bit, just to kind of have that parity. So let's have a look here. Um, Alright, I think we're just going to go ahead and drop out the collar. See what he does. Hopefully we like draw into Mortar Pod here so we can get his Delver. He's probably thinking about whether he wants to Vapor Snag in response to deny the draw. So if he goes Vapor Snag, which is fine. We're just going to replay the Paladin. I 
And the nice thing is, like, next turn, it's assuming he flips uh, Delver, we're going to be able to, you know, have Restoration Re Angel ready. Since he hasn't seen this deck, he probably won't be, you know, really expecting it. I mean, if we, you know, go Angel, then he, he definitely could be. So it's going to be really sort of depending on if we want to, you know, drop Cavern of Souls for Angel, then he will definitely be expecting it. But at the same time, you know, if he sits back, we're fine anyways, so. I'm not sure that it's worth the Mana League blowout just to get the surprise with the uh, the Angel without uh, naming Cavern of Souls for Angel, but uh, we'll see. We can also just go ahead and just drop Hero next turn. Okay, so there's Geist. Okay, so definitely, definitely liking what we're seeing here. Um, what's the play? So we, I mean, what we could do is we could definitely just have Restoration Angel, if we, if we name Angel here um, as a solid backup, to be able to go ahead and drop down and stop the Delver. Um, assuming the Delver flips. But we don't get as much values if we place one of our other cards. Like if we play Blade Splicer first, then we get more value of Angel and when we do have inevitably drop it. Um, we could also just drop Hero and just, and just force uh, a reaction here. I mean, he will at that point need to have um, Snapcaster into Vapor Snag, um, which is certainly, certainly possible. Um, kind of with that in mind, in some ways, I almost want to have Blade Splicer a little bit more because we get a little bit extra value, even if he has the Snapcaster into Vapor Snag. And then the next turn, we can get more value out of Restoration Angel and use that to stop Delver. So, uh, then again, if he doesn't have the Snapcaster, Hero Blade Hold could just win us the game on the spot. So, I think it's worth telegraphing that we do have Angel to be able to make sure we stop the counters. Um, but at this point, I think just for mana purposes here, I'm actually going to go ahead and drop down Hero. Um, if he, uh, you know, if he um, if he gets us here as Snapcaster, it's a little bit worse. But I think we're still at 19 and we should have enough time to recover just a little bit. Um, and it's enough worth the the investment here. Um, also, we definitely want to hold Pure Steel Paladin back in case he does have it. That way we can at least trade with Geist. So I mean definitely a couple different lines of play that we could go go with there. Um, but you know, hopefully this one pays off. Um, if he does have Snapcast, it's a little bit worse, but um, I think being mana efficient here, because next turn if we draw land, you know, we can go Splicer into Gather, or potentially Splicer into Equip. Um, yeah. So now if he doesn't have land, then we're just set, because he'll need the extra land to Snapcaster into, into Snag. So definitely in a very, very good spot at this point. Should we be able to connect with Hero? It's probably over. Hopefully. And there's the Mortar Pod for the Delver. Very happy to see that. Uh, he could have the Mana Leak back up, but I think at this point, well, you know, I think it's actually good here to just attack first and have Restoration Angels back up in case he has shenanigans for Hero, because now we can just have this as a blank for um, Snag or uh, Snapcaster into Snag at this point. So, very happy to see that. And I think that's just what we want to do here. 
Uh, we're happy to trade pure steel for Geist at this point also. This way we can have the blowout next turn if he decides to attack. The, the only thing is if we attack with both and he decides not to block, um, you know, at that point we, we probably have to have restoration here, here, so otherwise we could drop Mortar Pod and just attack with Hero Blade Hold, get the Delver, ensure the kill, and then have Gather, um, but no restoration angles. I think we attack first. Um, mm. let's, let's, let's attack with both and see what happens here, I think. I think the extra damage is actually going to be worth it. This is definitely going to force him to, uh, to a decision here pretty quickly. Okay, so at this point, he's at 10. What's his play here? I think we just want to have Angel back up. I think we definitely jeopardized too much by um, by not leaving that line of play open. And this way we can still just get his Delver if he um, does go get in here at this point. I mean really at this point he has to deal with Hero or the game's over. So now we go ahead, drop Angel to blank his Geist. Oops. Now, just to ensure the kill, we're just going to double block here. So this should be it, provided he doesn't have anything. Yeah, so that's definitely not going to do it. Now we just drop down Mortar Pod and mop up the rest. And that should begin. All right. So against Delver, what are we going to bring in? Um, we definitely want to bring in Ratchet Bomb uh, for zero for his uh, Delver. We want to make room for the extra Gaff Tinker's Cage, I think, just because now that they're running for Restoration Angel and for Snapcaster, shutting down their graveyard has becomes much more important. Um, I believe we also run Staff and Gut Shot. So by bringing these cards in, we're going to cut a couple cards here. Well, let's have a look. So I think at this point, we do actually want to drop Hero, just because of uh, Vapor Snag is pretty busted against Hero. I mean, Hero's definitely a very good card, but 
the same time, we want to make sure that we're not getting totally blown out. Um, I think we look at shaving to collar here. Um, I want to make sure that we hold on to Angel here. Um, War and Peace is actually a little bit more important now, um, just because they're going to be running Restoration Angels as, as well, and being able to punch through, and then also for the, the life swing is pretty important. But I think we only want two, just because we don't want to have... Um, they don't have too many white creatures there, and then also, um, you know, once again with the Vapor Snag, we want to make sure we're not getting too much blown out on that. Let's see, what else do we want to cut here? Probably cutting a 3-drop here at this point. Um, Blade Splicer is definitely nice against the... Um, you know, they're, uh, they're legendary, but at the same time... I think we do need to shave a 3-drop to really kind of tone this down a little bit. We get a little bit more out of Blade Splicer than we do out of Silver Blade. Well... Hmm. I think we're going to shave a Blade Splicer. And a collar here. So now we can still tutor up the uh, collar, but... Um, Okay, this is a very interesting opening hand, um, and I believe we do keep it with the, the double champion. So we are down to, to one car, uh, one land here, but I think we can definitely get there with this hand, especially in the draw. So there's the turn one ponder. Now hopefully we do draw land here, but Having double champion and uh, graph diggers is definitely pretty nice. Okay, there's the land. I don't think at this point we want to walk into pure steel just yet. Also, we wanted to get the extra double champion here. So hopefully it doesn't have the leak. We, we, I mean, to be fair, we could have baited this out with graph diggers cage, which probably would have been a little bit better. Unfortunately, we did not. That probably would have been the play now. I mean, now, shutting down the graveyard at this point is still very good. But having the double pressure of the champion would have been nice. And especially with Snapcaster and uh, four copies of Restoration Angel, he really does get a lot much more value, uh, or, or much, much more value from the graveyard at this point. So I guess here we just drop down pure steel, and then we definitely try to try to make a trade here. Gonna hold back in case he has the vapor snag, just to make sure we're able to trade. And the nice thing also is that we can definitely go ahead and set the Ratchet Bomb to 3 here. Um, okay, so at this point, we're going to go ahead and offer the trade. We could double block here in case he has the Vapor Snag, just to ensure that it dies. Um, but I would like to hold on to the Pure Steel if at all possible. And by blanking his 
turn. Um, hmm. I think we do want to try to climb out of the uh, the number of cards we've got here. So he does have the Restoration Angel there. Which is unfortunate. We're going to have to get to work here on these ratchet bombs. And hopefully, we're going to be taking a lot of damage here. We might just be dead if we don't have an answer. So at this point, because he does have the Restoration Angel also, uh, we can't risk having the Geist of St. Traff live. And so if he does attack uh, with Geist of St. Traff as well, we are going to have to double block here. So by, just by attacking with that, we know that he doesn't have uh, Snag. Which is definitely good news. That's going to be rough. Okay. Alright, so at this point I think we drop Mortar Pod to see what he's got. See what, we'll see what we can draw into basically and then potentially drop a second ratchet bomb. Okay, gather is very nice here actually. Now we may want to start a second ratchet bomb just because we're going to want to go ahead and get rid of uh, Ring Chandra's Pike as soon as possible and having a shot at getting rid of the Angel is very important here. Um, the question is, can we race or can we try to? Um, let's see, because so we'll see what happens. Like next turn, he equips Rune Channer's Pike, swings in with everyone. What does he have here? So that's seven, eleven. We go to two. We make five guys. I think no wait. We need to hold gather because if we hold gather, we go to two use the mortar pod to machine gun down his guys. Problem is we don't have Avison's collar. Hmm. Otherwise we drop gather this turn. We use mortar pod to take out his angel. Hold pure steel back to block the guys. Hmm. Problem is we don't have enough guys here to take out his angel without losing champion. But I think that we almost have to just because it's going to be such a threat. So I think the play is we, we drop gather, we bash in with champion, take out the angel, equip mortar pod to the paladin, wait for geist. Uh, geist is going to have the, the rune chanter's pike so we're actually not going to block it anyways. We take 7, 11, go to 2. Hmm. We have to block guys. Okay. So we block guys, we take 4, go to 9. Next turn, get the pike. I think we need to. Let's see, we're definitely, I, I believe we're definitely going to be casting gather here. Does that help us? We block Geist. Yeah, because if we, if we don't kill uh, Restoration Angel this turn, we lose. So I think we have to drop gather. And then we have to chump with Pure Steel on Geist next turn. And he's got the mana leak. Okay. That's unfortunate. So I guess at this point we are 
I think pretty much just dead. Pretty much the only chance at this point is if he misplays. Okay, so he did not misplay. So we take 12, go to 1. And you know, kind of with this in mind, we should have actually put the mortar pod on the pierce disc so we get a solo block the, uh, the Geist here, so that was incorrect. And actually, if we played the Ratchet Bomb, we could have had Ratchet Bomb for Angel. Ugh, yuck. But he had the Mana Leak back up. Hmm. I think our only hope at this point is to really just kind of draw something um, that we can help maybe draw a couple cards out, pure steel into something. I think that's going to be the plan. So we go to one. And that's not going to do it. Alright. So going into game three, do we want to make any changes here? Let's see. Having the singleton collar. I kind of want a second collar just to make sure we can't have it. You know, if, it, if the first one's countered, we still have a backup. Hmm. Not sure what to cut here. Collar might be a little bit better here for us than War and Peace. Um, I mean, he does have some... I mean, War and Peace is still very good. Hmm. I think we're just going to leave it like this and see how it goes. Because we, sh we should still be able to pick up a Collar with the Trinket Mages. Um, yeah, not sure what to take in. And not sure what to uh, to take out for it. So we're gonna be on the play, and this hand looks fine. Got the gut shot for his first elder. We can lead out with Graft Digger's Cage. But yeah, I think that having the the four caverns is definitely very very helpful for us. So here you might try to snag into counter next turn, potentially. Okay. So at this point we just try to connect the mortar pod. Now, if he leaves two mana open here, we definitely don't want to go for Trinket Mage, even if we draw the land, just because we don't want to get blown out by the uh, mana leak. So we're going to go here and just uh, try to faint with Mortar Pod, see what he does. And that's fine.
So now he's got uh, Snapcaster back up, most likely, but we do have the Grafdigger's Cage to shut that down. So now he's definitely got the mana leak. Um, hmm. I guess here we, I think we just go gather, just to bait it out, start putting some pressure down. I mean, we could go Trinket Mage, but then we we really don't want to give up these two guys right now. I think we just go gather at this point. There's the leak. Okay. He's probably not going to get another chance to use it, so that makes sense. So if he's not playing anything, he almost certainly has a second mana leak. Um, I'm not sure if we get... I think we still are going to hold back on the Trinket Mage Pure Steel plan. We're going to go ahead and drop down Splicer, see what he says. If he's got the leak here, it is going to hurt, but at the same time, um, it's kind of which plan we want to go with. gives us a little bit more more attacking power at the moment. Okay, there's the snag and that's fine. So at this point, he probably really wants to... Okay, so now he definitely has Restoration Angel in hand. He's going to try to bait us into attacking. I think at this point, we just... At this point, we drop Trinket Mage here. We may walk into the, into the counter spell, but I think we sort of have to at this point. So we definitely don't want to just walk right into his Restoration Angel. I mean, for sure know that he has one in hand. Alright, so there's the collar. No reason to give him a free kill. Yuck. Ugh. Oh my lord, this could be a lot of damage. Yep. Thirteen point angel. That's gonna be really unpleasant. <laughs> All right. Okay. So at this point, we need to drop pure steel into collar. No question. Okay, well, 
let's see, one, two, three, four, yeah, we can kill the angel. Um, so we're definitely going to go ahead and bash in first. If we can keep, actually, let's see, if we can use the gut shot, we go to three. We keep the blade splice around so we get extra value out of restoration angel. Kind of like that play a little bit more, so I think, yeah. So I think we go ahead and bash in for four. I think here we just get rid of the spirit and then gut shot, go to three, and then have blade splicer for angel next turn. Yeah. Alright, so his plan is going to be Moreland Haunt into Equip. So we got to have our Mortar Pod back up. Oh. War and Peace is exactly what we want to see here. Um, if we can connect with War and Peace, we should be set. However, we can also just kill him, I think, here. Because let's see if we drop, gather. 10, 12, 14, yeah, however if he has anything to interrupt that we, we do just die. I think what we do is we go gather, see if he counters it, and then we have mortar pod, and then that's 10 damage, yeah, okay, and we attack, yeah, and that, 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 that clinches it, alright, so I think we... I think we go ahead and gather. Then we still have Mortar Pod back up. So if gather connects, we just kill him. And so at this point we just bash in, get him to 10, and then kill him with the human tokens. We're going to force him to make the Merlin Haunt, and we'll just take it out with our Mortar Pod. So he could also have like Snapcaster here, but we have double Mortar Pod back up. He may not have seen the combo just yet, but he will soon.
All right. So you definitely took a little bit of extra time on this match. The clock's a little bit low here, but uh, doing okay. All right, that's the match. So yeah, definitely, definitely a good match against Delver there. But um, being able to combo off really, really helped us there in that last game. We will see you for round two.